skip, skip, skip to my loo, skip, skip, skip to my loo, skip, skip, skip to my loo, skip to my loo, my darling. Flies in the buttermilk two by two, flies in the buttermilk two by two, flies in the buttermilk two by two, skip to my loo, my darling. Skip, skip, skip to my loo, skip, skip, skip to my loo, skip, skip, skip to my loo, skip to my loo, my darling. I got a pretty girl, so have you. I got a pretty girl, so have you. I got a pretty girl, so have you. patrol slaughtered, every last man dead. In all my years of soldiering, nothing like this has ever happened to a unit under my command. I intend to see that it won't happen again. I wouldn't be too sure of that, General. If you don't want more men killed, don't send out more patrols. Chief Kampuitz is a very smart general. And you think he was responsible? That'd be my guess. That's a Wyandotte Lance. Kampuitz. Military genius, a superb strategist. Boone, you know him. Where did he learn the art? Well, he's a product of his times, General. He's mainly interested in survival, so he adapts. You admire him, don't you? I haven't seen him in many years, but he's a good man to have as a friend. A bad one to have as an enemy. Well, you don't choose an enemy, General. You make one. explaining exactly in what capacity you're here. Well, as a matter of fact, Major, I'm kind of curious about that myself. Now, what I meant was, is it official or unofficial? Colonel Boone's mission is strictly unofficial. He's here at my specific request. Well, then perhaps I should have asked if it's entirely confidential. <laughs> Hardly. That's why I ask you gentlemen here to dine with me this evening. Let's have a little plain, unvarnished truth. This garrison has an unchallenged record of failure. For two years now, Kampowitz has outmaneuvered, outfought, outthought, and outwitted you at every turn. Three generals before me have been sacked for failure and incompetence. Your failure, gentlemen. Your incompetence. Let me assure you, I have no intention of becoming scapegoat number four. That's why I invited Mr. Boone here this evening. That's why you're going to listen to what he has to say. Mr. Boone? <clears throat> Naturally, General, I'd like to try to be of help. I'm not sure I know what kind of help you need. How do we end this war? Just stop fighting. Our orders are to get... I know what your orders are, General. That's to move the Indians further west. You think we can do that without fighting? I don't think you can do it at all. Strange talk coming from you, Mr. Boone. Why is that? When you opened up the trail to Kentucky, brought the settlers in over the mountains, you did a powerful lot of fighting to clear the Indians out and make this region safe for other families moving west. 
Well, sir, we didn't try to force whole tribes, whole nations into exile from their own land. We were willing to try to live and work in peace with them. It hasn't worked out that way. In some cases, it hasn't. There's been wrong on both sides. There's been resentment, suspicion, intolerance. Selfish men, both red and white alike, seeking to serve up trouble to serve their own ends. Oh, but this is different. Different in what way, Major? Kampuitz is fighting to keep what he rightly believes belongs to his people. Well, meaning all the wrong is on our side. Meaning if you treat an Indian fairly, he'll be fair with you. Cross him and you've got yourself a merciless and bitter enemy. Kampuitz and his tribe have a treaty guaranteeing their borders. I say stick with that treaty. We're willing to compensate them, resettle them. 25,000 square miles of land for a couple of kegs of tobacco and a litter of promises never meant to be kept. It would seem you've been among Indians so long you're beginning to think like one. That's the only way to survive out here, Major. I recommend it. So then your best advice is for the U.S. Army to quit? <sighs> Until you're ready to bring up enough forces for an all-out war, that's my advice. Can we speak our minds, General? Go ahead. I think, for reasons I don't even pretend to understand, Boone here is trying to buy time for his friend Kampuitz. Time for him to gather more forces, time to make more alliances, to inflame all the tribes to war. That's enough. Major Howard and I demand you apologize to Mr. Boone. Well, what other reason can there be for his advising us to turn tail and run? I ask you to apologize. There's no need. Pretty plain, my way of thinking is not the military way of thinking, and there's nothing I can do about that. So, if you'll excuse me, gentlemen. Boone, I'm sure that if General, you get us there's a little... no nourishment gnawing on a dry bone. I'll be moving on in the morning. Insolent peasant. Gentlemen, you're excused. Major Howerton and I are going to have a little talk. Mr. Boone, I've come to ask your pardon for the remarks I made at dinner. Well, they were completely unfounded. I, I was extremely rude, I'm afraid. I let my temper get the best of my good judgment. I'm sorry. Well, that's all right, Major. I was a little rough on the Army, too. Then my apologies accepted. Very accepted. Thank you, Mr. Boone. Good night. Good night. General. Major. I'm glad you and the Major made your peace. On your orders, General? No. He was genuinely sorry when his temper cooled. Then no harm is done. Oh, I guess the fault was mine, really. I should have explained to him more fully why I sent for you before we had our discussion. Well, now that you've brought it up, why did you send for me, General? Boone, what do you see outside those gates? I see land, not for all of us, for red and white alike. That's all you see, the land? Well, what else is there? I suppose that depends largely on your point of view. Well, what do you see, General? Something entirely different. 35 years of soldiering and everything I've ever fought for, Boone. Oh, I admit to being selfish. The only thing that lies out there for me is either failure or success. If your success depends on beating Can Put, you've got a long, rough road to hope. Not beating him, Boone. Just reaching an understanding with him. I agree with you. This bloodshed is tragically senseless. It must be stopped. I've been sent out here to stop it. Boone, I'll tell you something my staff doesn't even know. I have plenipotentiary power to reach an agreement with Kampowitz to stop this fighting. Now, if you're talking about another treaty, I don't think he's going to listen. Hmm. I have a plan. What does Kampowitz want? <laughs> You're left alone, I suspect. And all the government wants is passage through this land to the Mississippi. A trail, a corridor. He can keep his hunting ground. His people will be safe. Nobody will intrude upon them. The government absolutely guarantees it. Well, that's an interesting proposition. I know I can convince him of our sincerity if I can meet him and talk to him face to face, man to man. It's the only way. And you want me to bring him in? Yes. He'll never come. 
Boone, you're his friend. He trusts you. I know you can convince him of our sincerity. Tell you the truth, General. I'm not sure I want any part of it. If you don't, the lives of his people and perhaps hundreds of American soldiers will be on your conscience. You have the chance, Boone, perhaps the only chance of preventing months, even years of bloodshed. Do you guarantee his safety? On my honor as an officer. He can come and go as he pleases. Boone, my whole career rests on bringing peace to this region. I have no other argument. I don't reckon you need any, General. A man spends a lifetime soldiering is not apt to settle for anything less than peace. I, uh, I don't know where Campowitz makes his camp, but my intelligence indicates that if you... Well, never mind that, General. Well, how are you going to find him? Well, I'm not. I'm just going to walk out there in those hills and you'll find me. Well done, Tawanga. The boy handles a bow with grace and power. Could his father's son do less? She, she's beautiful as a rosebud. Could her mother's daughter be less? This is a sight I never thought I'd see. Big turtle bound like a spitted buck. Well, are you gonna unspit me or are you gonna stick an apple in my mouth? <laughs> Untie him, Katoga. Well, free him. This is my great good friend, Big Turtle. Great good friend could have lost his scalp. <laughs> Big Turtle grows soft. I can remember when he could wrestle a bear with one hand and hold off ten warriors with the other. Welcome to my camp. It's good to see you again, Camp Puts. Have I changed? Tell me, how do I look? Like a noak shaking his fist at the moon. <laughs> Welcome again, Boone. Listen to me. If one man raises a hand, even so much as an evil look, the big turtle, I will crack his skull and feed his flesh to the ravens. Remember who warned it. Campoots. Tawanga, this is my good friend, Big Turtle. Come take his hand. Tawanga. He 
He has never been this close to a white before. This is my woman, Maranta. Who'd you need to? First a boy, and then a girl. A very obedient woman. This is Daniel Boone, Big Turtle. Fetch food and robes. What we have, he shares. You see, Big Turtle, the towns of the Wyand out are no more. The fields we planted, our great harvest no more. We've become wanderers. Nomads of the forest. We've lost everything in this war. Everything except our pride. That is one possession we will not surrender. You can't put, you can have peace and with pride. Oh, it's too late. It's too late, Boone. Can't put. Later. Later, Boone. First, we will have a feast of remembering. Then we will go into the forest and make new memories. It's a good shooting, Tawanga. Twang does not want your praise. learn to be hunted. By the white man? He's not like the others. If he were, would he find us in this game we play? Will he, Father? Big Turtle will find the tracks just as I have taught you to find them. He is not Big Turtle, and he will not find us. You're thinking this, my son, will not make it so. him for learning his lessons too good? You were different. He was commanded to show you friendship. I'm white. To be distrusted like all the others. You're angry, my friend. You know there can be no friendship without trust. You've asked Tawanga to be my friend. Let me earn that way.
Here, you take it. Come on, take it. Keep some tension on there. Keep it tight. Play him in. Here, go. Slow it. Slow it. I did it! I did it! You sure did. You're a born fisherman. You see this little baby in a skillet. Why don't you take him up here to your paw and let him see him? Here you go. Why don't you just keep that pole? I'll see if I can get you some more hooks. Tawanga's very grateful to Big Turtle. My father's friend is my friend. You know something? That's just the way I'd like for it to be. the hang of it. Now we will talk. You have made a long journey and taken much risk. What word did you bring to Camp Woods? Words of peace. I have tasted the white man's peace. I have no stomach for it. You know you can't win this war, Camp Woods. For two years we have fought and my people still have the land. But where are the whites? The whites are behind the stockade at Fort King, beaten, fearful, and imprisoned. For the time being. But sooner or later, they'll reinforce more companies, an army. We'll meet them all. And there'll be cannon and cavalry. I would lead my people to the death before I'd lead them to slavery. There's no need for either. You see, Cam Puts, there's a new commander at Fort King, and he's come here with the power to negotiate with you. All he wants is a corridor through your hunting grounds. A neutral trail that will be safe for your people and whites alike to travel. Cannot be. Why not? Here are your hunting grounds. Nobody to disturb you. All that's involved is a trail. No. I will show you how it will be. The whites gorge themselves on the land as a snake devours its prey. They swallow it whole. First a foot. And then a limb. The snake's body begins to swell and you would think it would burst. But no. No, it doesn't. He engulfs it all until the last small inch is fastened in his jaws. And I will not feed that snake. All right, you just go on fighting. You go on losing your braves and losing your villages and turning your young into wild animals. You've chosen what you want. <laughs> Father makes medicine. What do the gods say? The words of black fire carved on a pillar of white. The great hand stretches out and gouges the sun from the sky. There's nothing left. The far flown cry of a bird.
to sleep, my son. How well do you know the new commander at Fort King? Not well. Well, then what makes you think he can be trusted? Because he's an ambitious man. He wants power and position. To gain both, he has to have your support. If you were in my place, would you go? I think I'd take any chance to protect my people prevent more killing. You have won him over. How about you? I want him to be free. How long do you think he's going to live to enjoy your kind of freedom? I will go. But only because you say I must. I have the heart for it. Who will lead us if you do not return, Kamput? I will come back. Let us go with you. Do I need further protection when I'm escorted by Big Turtle? I will go alone. Though the wind may grief for you, my husband, it is a foolish wind. Yes, this we know. Hunt well, my son. If there is a pebble in my moccasin, will not be to remind me that we have parted. Yes, my husband. The path you will travel will be filled with pebbles. This we know, too. Hey, you still expect them, huh? You're a man of small faith, Major. I tell you, he went to warn Kampowitz. Sorry to disappoint you, but I believe our guests are arriving. The General's compliments, Mr. Boone. He'd like to see you in his office. This is Cam Puitz, chief of the Wyandots, General Grosskamp. So this is the bloodthirsty savage who's been waging war against us. General, I told Cam Puitz... I have no idea what Boone has told you. But I'm very pleased to see that you have come. Guards, place that murderer under arrest. Hold it, Boone. I assure you, I'll have no hesitancy about using this. Get that savage out of here. I will walk alone. General, you gave me your word. A matter of convenience. Did you think I'd let that massacre go unavenged? I don't think that massacre had anything to do with it. Either way, the end justifies the means. Major Howerton, take Mr. Boone to his quarters and confine him there under guard. Yes, sir. Make that a strong guard, General. You can be sure of that, Boone.
Yes, come in. Dispatches from the War Department. No need for you to wait. Get some food and rest. Bad news, General? It seems the Secretary of War is going to pay us a visit. Dubious honor, to say the least. Well, when's he coming? Any time. I should imagine he's already on his way. Well, why would he come here? Personal inquiry into the progress of our campaign against the Wyandotte. Uh, that could prove embarrassing, as long as Boone's being held a prisoner. I thought of that. However, if he knew that I had Camp Lewis in custody, he might be tempted to abandon his trip as an unnecessary inconvenience. Now I'll have the dispatch rider return at once. No, no. I prefer you carry the message personally, Major. If the secretary should persist, I'm sure you could be more persuasive than an ordinary scout. You'll share the honor of the capture, naturally. When do I leave? Tonight. In the meantime, let's have Boone in here. Yes, sir. Boone, sit down, won't you? I'm a little particular about who I sit down with. And may I offer you a drink? The same goes for drinking as sitting down. I'd hoped that by this time you'd have cooled down a bit, but no matter. You won't get away with this. You know that, don't you? I already have, Mr. Boone. General, you're a fool. Do you think Camp Wood stands alone? You mean the Wyandotte? What are they without a leader? You see, Boone, what you consider treachery is really an act of mercy on my part. By capturing Kampowitz, I dare say I saved a thousand lives or more. Without him, the Indians are leaderless, but still alive. I wasn't talking about just the Indians. Surely you don't mean the white man. There's good land out there. You said so yourself. I said there was enough for all of us, and I know some people who would agree with me. And I know more who wouldn't. They want that land. I made it possible for them to get it without any interference. I don't think you'd be a hero to them, General, if they knew how you went about it. Outside of you, Major Howard, and myself, all anyone knows is I accepted Campowitz's surrender. I think I'm beginning to understand you. Not completely, Boone. You've been of some help to me. And in return for your silence, I'll mention you in my report and perhaps arrange a land grant from the government. What about Camp Woods? He'll hang for murder. After a military trial, of course. Then you'd better hang me too, General. Because if I get out of this, I'm going to have your scalp. It's all over, Boone. Can't you understand that? Major Howerton's riding east tonight to spread the word that Camp Woods has been captured. I've made my offer. I'll accept your word. Him in the guardhouse with his Indian friend. Major Howerton doesn't want to get caught when this storm lets loose. What do 
Don't just sit there like a slab of rock. All right, say it. Say I tricked you just like he wanted. Treaties. No more flags of truce. Will we meet again? No. But on certain nights, when the honey's been good, and I sit by the rich blaze of a birch wood fire, and all is quiet, and all is peace, I will think of Big Turtle. And I will say that he was not of one color or another color. I will say that he was my good great friend. Storm's over. Yes, you'll have good traveling, Howard. And, oh, my compliments to the Secretary of War, and tell him a full report will be on its way. I'll do that, sir. Well, good luck then. Thank you, sir. General! General! Well, what is it? Prisoners, sir, they're gone. The what? They tunneled out. Major! Major Howard Dunn! Major Howard Dunn! General Groskopf. You're wasting your breath, sir. He's too long gone to hear you now. 
assembled your men, Lieutenant. The prisoners have escaped. I want a search party out in 15 minutes. Yes, sir. Boone! Been waiting for you, Major. Took you quite a while getting here. I'm gonna kill you, Boone. Secretary of War has just arrived, sir. Secretary of War? Why, that's not possible. Secretary, I hardly expected you so soon. It's quite all right. It's quite all right. You look tired, sir. I'll arrange quarters for you, and after you've had some later, rest... Later, General, later. Incidentally, I ran across a mutual friend along the way. I reckon you didn't expect to see me quite so soon either, General. Corporal of the Guard. Corporal of the Guard, place this man under arrest. Sir, this is the man... Perhaps we should discuss this further in your quarters, General. This way, Mr. Secretary. You will be interested to know, General, that your Tribune, Major What's-His-Name, thanks to Mr. Boone, has just had a very short and unproductive journey. He is not going to spread the joyous news of your victory over Kampuits from the mountains to the sea. No, sir, he is not. By my orders, he is now being conducted to Fort Marcy, where he will remain on ice until his tail congeals. Sir, my intentions... You will not interrupt, General. That's a serious breach of military etiquette. Which brings me to point number two. Breach of military etiquette. Mr. Boone has given me a complete account of your so-called capture of Kampuits. In all my years as a soldier, in all my experience, both in and out of uniform, I know of nothing so degrading to the uniform you wear or the country you purport to represent as this flagrant violation of the sanctity of a flag of truce. What was in your mind, sir? What made you think your government would condone your treachery? My orders were to resettle the Wyandotte. Kampuits is their leader, constantly stirring up trouble. General, when you get a thorn in your foot, you don't help it by burning down the bush. As Secretary of War, I officially disavow your action. As a fellow officer, I am humiliated. If it were possible, I'd have a court convened today, and I have no doubt they'd vote to have you hanged. If it were within my province, I'd hang you myself. But failing that, I intend to strip you of all rank, pending a hearing before a military tribunal. In the meantime, you'll be confined to quarters under guard. Tragic sight, Mr. Boone. It's not pleasant to watch a man die before death takes him. No, sir. My deepest regret is that your Indian friend couldn't have seen this. It might have helped convince him of our sincerity. Oh, he saw it all right. Mr. Secretary, take a look around you. They've been sending up smoke since early light. What's your recommendation, Mr. Boone? Mr. Secretary, I figure it's our turn. Our turn for what? Walk out there carrying a flag of truce. I figure Cam Puts is still a man of honor.
Ken Puts, this is the Secretary of War sent out here by the President. We were not to meet again. I think you ought to listen to what he has to say. I've come to apologize for the dishonorable conduct of an officer who is unfit to wear the uniform of his country. We regret his actions, and we wish to assure the Wyandotte that he will be punished. I have no interest in this officer or his punishment. Then let's talk about your people. What can you say of interest to my people? That we wish to live in peace with them. I will talk to you. All we ask is that there be a treaty granting us passage through your land to the great river. What does Big Turtle say? Well, I think he said the right words. He said, your land. I think that's the important thing. As long as you own it, you can permit trespass or not. That is the truth. It will be the land of the Wyandotte. But we will let the white people pass through on their way to the Great River. So long as they come in peace. So long as they do not settle. Is that understood? That's all we ask. I will give my word for my people. And I give you mine in return. I would say one more thing. If the white man means to keep his word, what is the need of the soldiers? What is the need of this fort? You ask us to abandon this fort and withdraw all soldiers from this territory? It will show me that you do not lie. I think he has a point, Mr. Secretary. You drive a hard bargain. Is it agreed? It is agreed. We will evacuate this post immediately. We will send no more soldiers to the land of the Wyandotte. Then we will live in peace. At least he kept his word. Everything and everybody's gone. And I will keep mine. And Tawanga after me. Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, if a white man shows up at your camp and wants to join in on the hunt, would that be trespassing? We will allow one white man, especially for fishing. And most especially if you take me. Well, I thank you, Tawanga. Farewell, my friend. Ken Puts. Goodbye, Big Turtle. So long, Tawanga. Hayoka! Hey,